Completed in 1941, Fern Ridge Reservoir has become a valuable resource to the people of the Willamette Valley. Fern Ridge is operated by the Army Corps of Engineers, which is in partnership with farmers and environmentalists throughout the area. They work together to provide a delicate balance between the needs for irrigation, recreation, and wildlife habitat. When Fern Ridge Reservoir was discovered to be in a failure mode, plans were made for an emergency drawdown. It was then that the government agencies came together to solve the problem before there was a crisis. Initially, long ago, it started out as flood control. Um, and we understand why it's there. A prime directive is to hold back those winter flood waters to protect life and safety. Secondary, of course, is agricultural. And they'll need to, you know, hold back the water and during the summer, during the winter time, and then the summer months, and they let it out a little bit at a time so people can water the crops. And third, you know, is the recreation. Um, flood control and life and safety are very important. Absolutely, I think that recreation is important as well. The reservoir was constructed back in the late 30s and early 40s. I don't think there was uh, a lot of concern given, you know, to uh, uh, to environmental consequences in that time frame. The the challenges then were to control floods and to uh, uh, provide uh, some supplemental water storage for irrigation pursuant to development. The importance of Fern Ridge as, as a major water body and, and wetland, uh, fringe wetland habitat has been real, real important in, in the flyway, in providing migratory and, and uh, uh, habitat for, uh, for, for birds uh, moving through the valley. This is a, a, a vessel with a capacity of about 100,000 acre feet of storage. Uh, that can fill up literally overnight, depending on the capacity of the downstream uh, river channels. In the summer of 2002, uh, when uh, in, in the course of normal vegetation management on the downstream face of the embankment, they noticed sinkholes or depressions in the dam. So it's simply the, the maintenance personnel in the process of mowing noticed sinkholes. Something was wrong. And, and then upon investigation realized that the drain system, when they went to investigate that, as in putting a camera, or tried to put a camera down it, and realized that the drain system was plugged and that um, the dam was in a failure mode. The, the worst case scenario would be a catastrophic failure in a matter of, of, of hours, failure of the embankment uh, and the loss of the, of the pool in a very short period of time. What we've done by constructing this flood control project, you know, we've altered the hydrology. We've been to build dikes and constrain waterways, you know, uh, whereas uh, uh, if we restore those uh, uh, natural flood plains or components of them, we, we regain some of the, of the natural uh, flood attenuation, you know, properties or functional values of those areas. So we're uh, trying to work with the state to look for opportunities to enhance uh, that uh, uh, those plant communities around the fringes of the reservoir to provide habitat for, for migratory uh, uh, waterfowl. We saw a great opportunity with the extra material where we excavated the trench and the fact that we could build some wildlife areas from the material that's taken out of the trench. Those give us the ability to manage water levels pursuant to creating you know, a more desirable, more diverse uh, wetland plant communities. The materials put in basically in one foot lifts. They have two pull pans behind each tractor, and each pull pan can drop and pick up a load each. They're eight and a half yards in each pull pan and they can recycle from the top of the dam and drop their loads down along the base of the dam and they each recycle in about six minutes. So you're running four of those in a shift. You get those going in a 10 hour shift and it combines to about six, 7,000 yards per shift and you get two shifts going 24 hours a day, seven days a week and that's how you move 450,000 cubic yards in a matter of a few weeks to take the dam down, then get into moving the trench, and then put the dam back up in the same method. And that's how you get a dam done in one summer. There's a lot of machines, and they're working close together. And it's amazing how they communicate. You know, it's a beep of a horn. 
it's they're on radios talking to each other they're moving around each other and they are listening and talking to each other and you know you think that they're not paying attention and they really are paying attention and when I'm walking around or other people are on the ground you know you you make eye contact they see you they give you a signal that it's okay to walk by and you know you you really don't go near them until you get them those kinds of signals and then you go by and then they go about their digging and working issues you you run into uh, between you know public use recreate desire for desire for recreation opportunities and uh, and the protection of natural resources and I think there's a continuing struggle and I think it's there's some been some big challenges here at Fern Ridge I, I think uh, I think we've been reasonably successful in trying to uh, in trying to direct you know and, and minimize impacts from recreation on the on the resource program quite a bit of quite a bit of energy went went you know, under that general category of environmental environmental protection and uh, fortunately I think we did come through in pretty good shape you know I think we're very fortunate would be we talked to uh, other uh, partnering agencies the state of Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife the US Fish and Wildlife Service uh, other uh, other uh, agencies uh, that had uh, had concerns well I had no idea of the impact of Fern Ridge until it was failing and it was drawn down and it it wasn't going to be available to the community. And then to be a part of fixing it, to have it repaired and to see it come back online and to to be able to have friends that I know in the community, you know, talk to me about it and say how happy they are that it's being repaired and that it's going to be back up. It feels good to that they're talking to me about it and that I can share in that. So I've enjoyed that. There's a lot more than dirt moving. You saw a government move that moved very well. So when the ribbon fell today, it was a year of that. It was, a, it was five years worth of work in a year that can be done. But I think that the things we do today can ensure that that land is there and the infrastructure is there and the possibility and the dream. The need that people have to be together, to recreate, to laugh, hopefully that still exists and hopefully these parks are full of people wanting to do that then I've done my job they've done their job and everyone in between and uh, hooray for all of us and all of them